down the house. These holes right here from Mr. Wilford coming home drunk started laying off in the wall like a jackhammer, man. I got scared and ran in my room. I'm trying to tell you to man up. Listen to me, son. I'm trying to give you some man training. Judge Joe's school of man up today on Judge Joe Brown. I'm trying to tell you to man up. Former skate rats turned roommates discover one grew up and the others didn't. Freelance videographer Dennis Williford is suing his former roommates for damage to their rental home and unpaid rent. Defendants Anthony Newsom and Jamal Jordan say they paid their share of the rent before moving out. Now it's Joe time. Mr. Williford, it would appear that you're suing two of your, well, I guess you had three roommates, Mr. Newsom and Mr. Jordan, and you are seeking to have them pay their fair share of the assessment by the former landlord of $4,375 for damages to the rental home. Yes, sir. You explain this to me, please, sir, plaintiff. Uh, I do freelance videography, so I travel a lot, and a lot of times when I would come home, I would see, you know, I'd come to find uh, holes in walls, broken windows, uh, shattered beer bottles in the yard or street, uh, stains, you know, whether it be or vomit, maybe from partying on the carpet, uh, a number of things. Trash, uh, dishes piled sky high, moldy old food, like whatever, you know, whatever they didn't take care of the night before, morning after. And you're saying that they're responsible for damages to the premises? Yeah, so whenever, I mean, I would go out and I'd be like, you know, hold the fort down, or, you know, as they say, like, don't burn the house down, I guess. In this case, it's more literal than not. Hmm. Now, what sort of uh, contractual arrangement did all of you have with each other? All right, well, um, we decided to get a place together. I, uh, we found a place, I signed the lease, and it just came that they never ended up signing it. It'd be like, hey, you guys gonna help me amend the lease, get it signed? Uh, so either, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, man, uh, we'll do it. They never did. Never did, or... Uh, he never brought it to us. He always said, I'm well, gonna bring you the lease, I, we're gonna I sign didn't it. ask you yet. Hold your turn. <laughs> You'll get the floor. He's sneaky. I wouldn't look so cocksure with such a sneer on your face. It's not helping your cause. Now, oh. back to this. You know, how long did all of you stay there? We were there for about a year. Year? And not to mention, like, uh, when it all came down, like, they just started moving out one by one. Like, I was in New York one time, and um, Andy called me and was like, yeah, I'm moving out Sunday. Sunday was three days away from the phone call. And I'm just like, you know, what am I supposed to do? Didn't go uh, down like that, man. Mm-mm-mm. Miss Sonia, you quit grinning like that over there and reflecting on days of yore when you were down there in the Beverly Hills court <laughs> system. I know what you're thinking. Yes. There are kids like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I've seen the assessment from the landlord about the damages. All right, which one of you wants to speak first? Oh, well, I'll go first. Okay, you, you jump right in, right? Now, let's see. You are Mr. What, Newsom? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Newsom, defend yourself. The whole phone call thing he was just talking about, I called him three days away. I called him, it was like a month or two before I handed time that it happened, and I was like, I can't take it anymore, man. All these random people are coming over here partying. This is like a party house or something, you know. I tried to clean it and keep everything, you know, somewhat nice. The place was a piece of anyway you remember you stayed there for a year yeah but it's cheap man it was cheap well was if cheap. it was cheap you stayed there for a year i got more time to clean stuff and pick stuff up than i do money so well it worked out you're okay. the one that's in the situation yeah i shouldn't have stepped on this the ship before it sunk but it was it was it was pretty bad sharks but... may be in the water when oh, you step there's a lot off. of them man. there's one standing to the right of me over here that i just all, all, I'm, all i'm coming to in this is like I did put two holes in the wall. I was drunk. I've been drinking bum wine. And uh, I was walking to stop a fight in the kitchen that was going on because I didn't want none of our plates to get anything to broke. I tripped over the trash can that was on the floor and fell into the wall and put a big hole in it. Well, I know, I know, I'm, a big, I know I'm a big fella, but though I used to do drywall. And the walls have, like, studs and supports in them. Come to find out, this wall is just like a piece of plaster. You could, like, push oh, your hand Oh, but there's through. laugh behind it. Look at that. That was really old, though. Oh, no, that's you the other wall. right through that laugh, too. 
There was many holes. That's just one. Well, there's, there's one. There's one hole that I didn't manage to get a picture of that was about four by three feet. And <sighs> not only was there a hole in the drywall, but the boards looked like they had been kicked and punched out. Wait, hold on, hold on. That's immaterial. You know these pictures you see of these scenic villages and towns in Europe where they are buildings that have the brown wood framework and the white <clears throat> squares with the angles going through. Do you know what that is? World War II. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when they're in good condition. It's wood framework with some rushes and mud. Well, I said the house has been held together by mud. It's been there for four or five hundred years, and they've tried to keep it up. So just because it's cheap plaster still doesn't get past the fact that if it's treated white, right, it can last Well, the wall I'm time. talking about didn't even have the boards behind it. You could push on one side of it and well, the other side Well, you would got move. drunk and you tripped and fell. That's two holes in the wall. We're not these talking holes about right here from Mr. Wilford coming home drunk mm -hmm. and being mad. And there was an American flag that covered that. Ripped it down and just started laying off in the wall like a jackhammer, man. I got That's scared and ran in my room. Well. <laughs> okay. They're oh. fascinating. What was that? <laughs> that's that's Jamal after a few Party one too many. Time. This yeah. is, uh, I mean, that's just how it was around there often. And Notice how clean the kitchen is, though. It <laughs> once. <laughs> I wasn't there, though. And this is one of the kids' rooms. Uh, yes, that's one of the things the landlord is a bit upset about is the artwork put on the walls. Well, it looks and, like someone gave around, a three-year-old crown. It's around the whole wall, uh, every wall. And that's, it's like, looks like beer cans and ashes. Uh, or and not cigarette ashes. There's too many of them. I don't know what they set on fire. That old in the sneaky tub, dustpan caught something on fire in there. That's Jamal's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still like you. It's okay. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. So Jamal has been identified as having done this. Let's see. Sir Anthony has been identified as doing that, and Sir Dennis has been identified as doing the other. I think he should pay a little bit more than everybody else, though, because he's the one that will throw these ravishing parties. I'm trying to tell you to man up. Man up today on Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The defendants in this case say the house they shared with the plaintiff was a cheap piece of junk. They admit to easily causing damage, along with the plaintiff, to the poor quality walls. Let's get back to the case. Let's see. All three of you clowned around. <clears throat> you two were tenants, subtenants on a month-to-month -month tenancy. The plaintiff is not seeking past due rents. He's seeking a share of the damages that were caused to this apartment. Now, let's see. Sir Jamal has been identified as having done this. Let's see. Sir Anthony has been identified as doing that, and Sir Dennis has been identified as doing the other. I think we're all at blame. Uh, that's exactly the point. You see, <laughs> what his share thing that he was seeking is each of you should bear a one-third of the expense. I think he should pay a little bit more than everybody else, though, because he's the one that would throw these ravishing parties. Well, he's accusing you two of having working. wild parties while he was out of town dealing with his occupation. I think it's only equitable we divide it three ways. So, let's see. Your recovery, Mr. Wilford, will be $2,916.67, which works out at fourteen fifty thirty four. That's not cute. The objection has to be on a point of law, and you oh. haven't raised one. Oh, sorry. And I can't think of one that you could raise. So, your recovery, Mr. Plaintiff, will be 291667, 145834 from each. And oh. your call. And this courtroom is now in recess. The roommates made the place a little too roomy, as in holy, and they did not have the landlord's blessing or the plaintiff's. They need to share the burden. And now we're on to the next case.